This is a setup for the gas constant lab and the first thing that we'll be doing is measuring out a piece of magnesium. I've got attached to this piece of cardboard a length of magnesium that weighs about 0.035 grams and another one that weighs about 0.045 grams. We want the mass of our magnesium to be somewhere in between there, ideally somewhere in the 0.040 gram region. So I'm going to cut off a piece of magnesium that is about that length. So I will use scissors here. You could just tear it with your fingers, but I think it's a bit easier or a bit more accurate using scissors here. So I'm just going to cut a piece and hopefully it'll be, whoops, there we go. Hopefully it will lie in length between those two and it does. And that's good, that's what we want. So now we're going to take that and we're going to weigh it. So here's my cut piece of magnesium. Uh, it says in the directions it's probably a good idea to sand it as well. That's before you weigh it. Then after, it's, after you've sanded it, you can put it on the balance. And just note the mass. It should be somewhere between 0 0.035 grams and 0 0.045 grams. So what we're looking at here is what's called a udiometer tube. It's closed at one end and open at the other end. And it's got these little graduations on here. I'm going to move this in closer to the camera so you can get a closer view of what the graduations look like. Now the unfortunate thing about a udiometer tube is you would hope that the graduations were accurate and that they were exactly one milliliter, one milliliter but Unfortunately, it turns out that they're not. So what this means is we have to calibrate it. The way we're going to calibrate this is we're going to use this kind of setup. This is a burette and it's been filled to 0 0.00 milliliters up here. Always make sure that the bottom of the meniscus is on the line as you would normally do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to empty 40 mils or 40.00 mils or close to it into the udiometer tube. So that's what I'm going to do now. And as you can see, uh, the best technique here is basically to use a burette stand and to have it hanging off the table rather than trying to lift up and, and do it that way. So I'm just going to put in about 40.00 mils. It doesn't have to be exactly that. Somewhere in the ballpark though. Now, what I'm adding from the burette is exact. There's no doubt about that. But what's going into the udiometer tube is not particularly exact. This is how we're going to calculate what's called a conversion factor to take account of the fact that the udiometer tube is not correctly graduated. All right, so I've added about 40 40 mils now. I will read the exact number off there and that will be the be what I've, I've put there and then what I'll do is I will read off here what the udiometer tube is actually saying. Now I know it's upside down but you should still be able to get a measurement based on that. Obviously if you try and turn it the right way up all the water will come out. Right, so we've got our udiometer tube, it's been calibrated. It doesn't have to be dry for this next step, but uh, you, know, you do obviously need to have all the water poured out of it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to add in concentrated HCl. Now often, concentrated HCl will be added from this dropper bottle or something like this. Now the trick with a dropper bottle is that it's got these notches on the side and it's got this little nib right here. Currently, that's open. So what's going to happen is if I pour this, stuff will be able to come out and drip off the, the nib. Now, if I have it like this, that's closed and that's not going to work at all. The way this is operated is I make sure I open it first, I stick my finger on the top like this, and then I can pour and stuff will come out 
from the top of the dropper bottle. I'm going to fill this 10 mil graduated cylinder about halfway because I'm looking for about four to six mils of hydrochloric acid. Note how I'm keeping my finger on the top here. That stops the lid from coming off. I don't have to be too exact. I can make it about halfway, that's fine. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to pour it into the udiometer tube. Now I did this in a fume hood because the HCL can be a bit fumey at times. Notice I'm also wearing gloves as well and safety goggles, very important. The idea here is I've got just regular DI water here, but I suppose it could be tap water, it shouldn't really matter for this particular experiment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this in on top of the HCL with the idea of leaving the HCL in the bottom and sort of layering the water on top. Now you might say, well, it's just going to mix. Well, actually it turns out the HCL is really quite dense compared to the water and will pretty much sit on the bottom and not mix very much. Now the idea is that I'm going to add the water to the udiometer tube fairly slowly at first so that I can be successful in layering the water on top of the HCL. Just fairly slowly, that's a good rate to begin with. Once I get a fair layer of water on here, I can pour a little bit more quickly. want to do is pour this in so it's fairly close to the top of the udiometer tube. So that should do it. Now what I want you to see here is you kind of see the layer. You've got the HCL on the bottom, you've got the water on the top and there's the it's not really a phase separation per se, but you can see that there is a separation between the two. And that's exactly what we're looking for for the next step. So here we've got our uniometer tube layered with the water on top, the HCL in the bottom. This is the magnesium I cut earlier. And I'm going to just sort of screw that up into a, a very loose ball of sorts. And what I'm going to do is put this into the udiometer tube. There we go, just getting that into a ball here. Alright. Okay, so it drops into the udiometer tube. What I'm going to do is it's going to float down here, it's going to contact the HCL, and then it's going to start reacting. At that point, I'm going to flip the udiometer tube over with my gloved finger on the end and then put this end of the geometer tube underneath the water here in this beaker. Alright, so let's see how that goes. Now, here it goes. Now sometimes the magnesium will float on top, as you can see there. Let's give it a light tap here to break the surface tension. Here he goes. Alright, so now it's floating down stick my glove finger on top here and wait for it, just sort of loosely initially, wait for this to contact the HCL and wait for reaction and there we go. Alright, so now this goes under the water like this and you can see the formation of the bubble, give it a shake if the magnesium kind of sits on the side there a bit. And you can see the magnesium reacting and hopefully it will all dissolve. Now as long as we've layered this properly, then the, the HCL should be concentrated enough to dissolve all of that magnesium that was in there. I'm going to go ahead and clamp this, making sure, very sure, but the level of the water is above the level of the udiometer tube, the open end. So that has to stay under the water the entire time. Could you please zoom in on that? 
Now you can see the you can see that's underneath the level of the water. Now I'm looking at this, and it looks to me like all of the magnesium has has dissolved, which is good. That's what we wanted. The other thing that's important is now just to wait a little while for this reaction to cool, and then I can equalize the pressure. So we've let this sit for a few minutes, let it cool, and now I'm in a position to be able to equalize the pressure. Now if I can equalize the level in the udiometer tube with the level in the beaker, that will equalize the pressure, and the pressure in here will be equal to the pressure on the outside. So all I'm going to do now is just lower the udiometer tube, equalize the pressure, And now the level of the udiometer tube is pretty much equal to the level in the beaker. Maybe it's a little bit lower. There we go. Now we're going to leave this for a few more minutes, and what's going to happen is it may move. That level may change, and after a few minutes, if it's changed, then I'll do it again, and then it will. Then I will end up taking my measurement. So don't forget, there are the graduations on here and that's what you'll use to take the measurement of the volume of the hydrogen bubble that's in this udiometer tube.